Ranking chairs as a fat person from God tier to I'm never sitting on that ever again. Let's go. I love these kinds of chairs because I can take the cushion. I can like get right back against the wall of that chair. I can sit cross-legged, which I can never do. And I can hug the pillow if I'm feeling a little insecure. This to me is the perfect chair. I want one in my house. I can't even believe we made it this far in society where we have a top 10 list of best chairs to sit in while you're obese. <laughs> I, I, you know what? We've, we've succeeded too much, I feel like, where you can have a list like this. C Congratulations, everybody, for tuning in today's video. Top 10 best chairs to sit in while you're plus size. Number one, this chair, apparently. I, I don't, I've never seen a chair like this before in my life. This is something I feel like I saw in like Animal Crossing, maybe. But I, I had not known that... There was, why is this needed, you know? Like, but then again, you know what? You have top 10 best Roman, you know, top 10, top 10 best Roman uh, uh, emperors. You have the top 10 best places to eat deodorant. You know, like if you would to eat deodorants, there's literally a guy on YouTube that has sex with pizzas and he ranks them based off the quality and the texture and like what pizza is the best one to fondle with and stuff like that. So I wouldn't even, I'm not even surprised that there is a top 10 list on what, 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 chairs are the best to, to sit in I guess I just didn't you know to where we are now like it's more justified to have a list of the pizzas you're having sex with compared to chairs that you're sitting in because I don't even understand how this is even a this is even something to, to complain about you're so fat that you have to come up with a list of chairs that are the best ones compared to non non best ones like I understand it to a certain degree there are some chairs that are just not the best to sit in I've sit I've sat in very very bad chairs for me personally there is not many chairs that I find are really really uncomfortable to sit in maybe for like four five six seven hours of sitting in a chair but there might just like in general I never really have a problem with it and this is somebody that has the Hank Hill butt cheeks like my butt cheek capacity is very very limited and I still have almost no trouble sitting in almost any chair for this person to be making a list dedicated to what chairs you can and cannot sit in or which ones are the most appropriate which ones are the most structurally compatible which ones are going to be able to hold and withstand the sheer mass and girth of your body your frame at any given point in time it just kind of makes me feel happy in a way because a hundred years ago, your family might have been on the brink of collapse, starvation, ovos. You know what I'm talking about? Like you just, you don't have anything. And now here we are coming up with a list of chairs that are the most, the bestest chairs to sit in while being obese instead of, you know, just losing the weight. I mean, like, you know, the solution would be just to lose weight, but I guess that's not as fun as making these chair videos, but I hope she has some links. People might not agree with me on this one, but I like the arms on this one because there are enough arms that you can put your elbows on there, but they're not wide enough and long enough that they're going to cut you off at the hips if you're fat. I, you know, hey, she, she really got different different techniques here i didn't i had not i didn't even think about that but these are really high up right aren't these like really high up in terms of the armrests i feel like you're gonna put your arms up here when you sit down on it am i wrong isn't that where the back like your back is supposed to be and i i i get it like i understand your gut usually protrudes out in front of you so you need that like extra lift on the chair but you're gonna be sitting there like this when you're when you're like this like literally you're just sitting there like this like hey guys yeah make sure you guys subscribe to my channel it's a great youtube channel we do a whole bunch of stuff on this youtube channel anyway this is the top 10 list of the best chairs to sit in while you're obese I fundamentally disagree with this pick. I'm not a plus size person, but I think this chair is going to make you look stupid. I think if you sit down in this chair, I genuinely do not think that it's going to be comfortable for you for a long period of time. Um, but what do I know? I also don't think that the structural capacity of this chair is, and by the way, $160 for this fucking chair, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? This is, this is literally, a, this is literally a chair you put around a table. You're going to need at least forties. And how much is that? How much is that? That's got to be what? Oh man. What is that? Like 500 bucks? Is that 500 some change dollars, dude, for five of these things? Get out of here, dude. Go to Ikea, get a basic chair, get a basic bitch chair. And you know what I really love about these people is that they have the audacity to complain about this. I just, I just don't want you at my house anymore. Like, if you're my friend and you're literally having a ranking video of the best chairs to sit in and you come over to my house, I don't have any of these chairs. I, I don't. I just don't. I don't have any chairs. Uh, what is the number one going to be? Like a lazy boy? Like one a chair that's like four times the size of a normal human being that you can like throw the armrest up on? You can throw your legs up on, dude? Like what chairs are you looking for exactly that are going to be the number one picks here? I mean, I'm interested, dude. I, I, I genuinely am interested. I've never seen a list like this. Wicked chairs. 
I do not trust these legs at all. But uh, if you if you don't trust these legs, why do you trust these legs? These ones look a lot thinner compared to these ones. But maybe it's maybe it's the way that they make them. I guess, dude. It, it does seem like it's it was made by an Amish person. But usually Amish people. I mean, look. If an Amish person can make a house in their backyard, and they also don't like they have these amazing, beautiful, beautiful beards. I'm gonna st I'm gonna trust the structural capacity of those particular chairs compared to the ones that are. You know, like the ones that you're getting at the, the whatever this one was. But anyway, let's see. At least there are no arms. But they're the kind of chairs you have to sit right on the edge because you just know that it's going to squeak every single time you even think about moving. Oh, I don't know about that. What do you mean sit on the edge? Is it because you have so much? One thing you got you to gotta understand, right? When you reach this size, you have a lot of butt cheeks, okay? And then when you have a lot of butt cheeks, a lot of people sleep on this, is that you you get more girth in the areas that you probably don't want to have the girth in. So, like, for instance, when I sit down in this chair, I have, like, my back is perfect to the, to the chair, and my butt cheeks is, like, right against the edge, right? But if I was fat and I had more butt cheek on the back end, right? You know what I'm talking about? Like, the shelf area, right? If you saw my butt cheeks, right? I don't have a lot of them, but if you had more than me, this would protrude out. Like you would have a shelf almost, right? Like this would come out. You could probably place books on here. You know what I'm talking about? Just have assorted fruits and vegetables on your back. I mean, I, I wouldn't even be surprised if you were shopping. Somebody might confuse your butt cheeks with maybe their cart. Who knows? But the point I'm making is when you have a lot of that butt cheek capacity, what tends to happen is that you lean forward because you can't, when you push yourself against the chair, you're not actually pushing your back against the chair, right? You're pushing the back end of your butt against the chair. So what tends to happen is you have to like lean forward because when you're leaning forward, the butt cheeks, right? The where where the butt cheeks start, that's actually what's hitting the back of the chair. So why that's why you see a whole bunch of fat people sitting like this because their back is here because you don't usually hold a lot of uh, weight in your back, but you do hold a lot of weight in your butt. So there you have this like arch, you know what I'm talking? This artificial arch of incompatibility with the chair. So I'm not surprised that she did say that you lean forward a little bit or you're at the edge of the seat because you probably are at the edge of the seat. You're going to need at least three, four, five extra inches on the chair just to ensure that you're sitting properly on the seat, if that makes any sense. So... But you know what? Again, I just don't understand why this is even an issue, dude. I, I don't even know why I have to go into like the deep details of how. Yeah, I don't. Even, I shouldn't even know this. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I should. I should not be the person that has to tell you how fat people sit on chairs. I don't know why I know so much about this, but I do. Which is mortifying. I really like the look of this chair. It is giving me '90s nostalgia. But I just. It kind of looks like a big Jello. It, it doesn't. It. It kind of looks like if you went to like the Spy Kids factory. And they were just making shit. And then this was like, oh, yeah, it's a chair that you could sit in and you can eat. Doesn't it kind of look like that? I feel like that's that's what I'm getting from this one. Oh, this chair also is really, really weird, bro. This is like the Latina chair, bro. The Latina busty Latina chair. Doesn't it doesn't it look like that? Damn, this chair is big as fuck, dude. This one doesn't even look like you can put it in your house. How do you even get this in the door? Do you assemble it outside? Like you have to assemble this inside. They have to take it apart and then put it back inside. This doesn't look even like a chair, man. This looks like the front end of a truck. Okay, whatever, bro. Then I'm gonna sit in that and I'm gonna have to get somebody to help me out of it. And when I stand up, that whole plastic balloon situation is just gonna come off the chair with the rest of my ass. It's just something that I feel like maybe you shouldn't have to deal with as a person, as a human being. I kind of see what they're saying, but if you're if you're not wearing clothes, okay, everybody knows this. If you're not wearing clothes and you're wearing and you're sitting on maybe leather or some type of plastic material like that, you're going to hear that like, you know what I'm talking about? That the squeakiness or whatever because your skin is rubbing against it, which is very, very disgusting, by the way. If you have somebody that's sitting in your chairs and it's leather and they're not wearing a lot of clothes and they just leave like whatever print, man or woman, dude, I don't care who it is, dude. It's just going to get sweaty real quick. And uh, I don't. I just don't think that it's something I want to. If I have this chair in my house, I just don't want you over my house. But then again, I would never have this chair because this doesn't even. This doesn't even look like something I would ever have in general. Do, do people actually buy this? How much is this? I would love to know how much this is, bro. This does not look maintainable. Like you have to keep inflating like every day. Like whenever somebody comes over, you have to like. You know what I'm talking about? Like keep inflating it. I will get stuck. But not least, this is the worst chair in the fucking world. The legs are not stable. It, the chair wobbles. The arms are so tight in and you cannot escape this chair. If your gut, I understand it, dude. I really do. Because if your gut is coming out through the sides and it's separating the stomachs based off of those things, right? Because look, if you're seeing this chair, if you're a big person, you're sitting in this chair. She might not look that big. She's big. 
You sit in a chair, she got a lot of stomach area. So the stomach's going to be overflowing at the top, you know, kind of like some Niagara Falls type thing. It's going to be flying out through the sides, and then it's going to be coming out through the bottoms as well. So you got two different entrances, sorry, exits of the stomach area. And then I need to mention, it's going to be super uncomfortable for that because you're separating the stomachs in areas that it probably not normally is going to be separated in, right? But at least it does come in two different colors. You got the black and the dark blue or the navy. I would probably go with the black one just to make sure, and if somebody sits in it and they make a mistake, Nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know. And, uh, yeah, but I can totally see it. But, yeah, again, like, yeah, you, why do you have this issue? Why don't you just, like, I mean, nobody's buying this chair in general. Like, what is this, like, an office chair that you, like, a waiting room chair? I feel like they don't even make these anymore. But, you know, hey, bro, you got to complain about something. These are in every office. They are uncomfortable. Stop putting these chairs into spaces. Yeah, but stop making these chairs because in general they're not very good chairs. They're like cheaply made chairs. Don't make them. Like don't have the intention of not making them because of fat people. Like that doesn't seem like it's a that's not a sustainable thing. Most chairs, most things in general are not going to be made for fat people. So do it with the intention of making things better, but don't do it with the intention of fat people are not going to like that because it doesn't matter what you make. It's going to be ridiculously like there's no way you're going to be able to cater to these people. So I think this is there it is right there that's the top she didn't even put it she didn't even like label it out she didn't even have like the s tier a tier b tier she didn't even have that dude she couldn't even go all the way she, i swear she had that list at the very beginning didn't she yeah yeah bro she did she had this s a b c d e f g whatever she had all these all these tiers where the fuck did you put you didn't put them down at all did you where where did you put them dude where was the s what was the a what was the f okay well maybe i don't know what i'm talking about dude she couldn't even do that she couldn't even do that she got that Karen cut, though. You see that Karen cut? I think this is something that people in smaller bodies don't really have to worry about. I'm super nervous today because I have to put in an order for my office chair. I work for a nonprofit, so money's, like, the department I work for, money's not, you know, so strapped that we can't do anything. But if A lot of companies just kind of buy chairs. Have you guys noticed that? I had a friend that bought a Herman Miller off of a company because they were selling them all off of uh, like Facebook marketplace or whatever. And they sold them ridiculously cheap, but it was a tax write off when they were, when they were like getting the chairs in, in the office or whatever. And the, the company collapsed or whatever. So they were trying to liquidate as much as they possibly could. But a lot of times what will happen is like these big companies, uh, they'll just buy like 50 million of the chairs. Like they'll just buy like a hundred of them and they'll get them off like a good a good price off because they're buying so many of them all at once. And then the companies just collapse. And But here's the thing, like that it's just a tax write off because it's a business expense. We need these chairs. Oh, well, how much are these chairs? $2,000 each? Fuck it, dude. It's a tax write off, whatever. So they buy like 50 of them. And then uh, then you come in and you buy that Herman Miller for $1,000 of that chair. It's only been used like four times because nobody was employed at this particular facility. But here's the thing. I know I have big guy friends. I have guys that have a hard time when they buy chairs, they have to actually go into the store and they have to actually test it out. They have to sit, they have to see what it feels like because at being a bigger person, it's not the same thing for like me or you, for instance, like for me, I can, like I said earlier, I could sit in like almost anything and be fine. Like if anybody knows anything about this channel back when I got this webcam, which was sometime in, I don't know, what was that? July-ish, July, August. I, I sat in a wicker chair for probably a month and it was okay. I didn't have a problem. My floor had a problem with it. Definitely scraped it up the floor a little bit, but um, I didn't really have a big issue with it. I mean, I couldn't move around like this. I wasn't as free, but I didn't have an issue with it for the most part. It did probably become an issue after like five or six hours sitting in the chair, but most bigger men have to actually physically go into the store and test it out. For me personally, I this chair I've been using for like a year now, no problem at all, dude. And I know a lot of people probably would complain about it, but for me, nope, no issue. It's literally fine, perfect. I have no issues with it. I could sit in this chair for like 10 hours and be fine. But there are many bigger people that need to actually orient themselves correctly when it comes to the chair because it's something you're going to be sitting in for the long, a long ass time. But it's just really sad given the fact that a lot of these issues that you're dealing with could just be most of the issues, by the way. Most of the issues of these life. Because like a lot of these people, right? I hear not, it's not just the chair, it's the seat belt, it's the necklaces, it's the, it's literally whatever the fuck. And when you, when I say the seat belt, it's literally when you pull the strap to like buckle in, you can't, it doesn't have enough slack. Your gut is literally protruding out three or four or five extra inches compared to that, that strap. Some people have to go <gasps> and then tuck it and then and then it like comes over the seatbelt or whatever, right? Like, can you imagine literally having a seatbelt that's so, it, it is no longer 
Like it's no longer eligible for, for you to buckle it anymore because you're so fat and you think the solution instead of losing weight, which would have literally would have leave all of those issues is to go on Amazon and just buy like an extra nine or six, seven, 10 inches of seatbelt that you can buckle and then rebuckle on that. It's just crazy to me. And then also the necklace, dude. I've I've heard these seat these people before. They call it the fat tax, where they go, I don't know why so many of these companies make necklaces so incredibly small. And I have to go on Amazon, I have to go on like AliExpress, I have to go on Shein to buy a necklace extender because the necklaces don't fit around my neck anymore. And I look upon these people and I go, you don't have a neck. Like I don't even see where your your face and your shoulders have become one. And it's not like at that point necklaces are no longer things you, you don't even have a neck for the necklace right and i see this so many times dude it, 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 i don't know how many times i can see these people complain about this stuff and go we need to buy the extenders we need to go out ahead and we need to buy extra chairs and paddings and and we need to buy extra stuff on this and it's the fat tax and i just look and i go dude um not only are you spending three four five times more money on the food compared to everybody else you're also spending like a couple more dollars on extra like ex extra accountability techniques or accessibility tools in order to accompany the extra mass on your body instead of just losing the weight like what i don't understand like i i just don't understand how you could see that and then not think wait a minute what if i just lose weight and i don't have to deal with any of these problems and that would be the solution but instead they don't they don't look at it like that they just want to maintain the bigness of the body and uh, continue bro it should not be it should not be anxiety inducing when you have to pick out your office chair, dude. Like if they're sitting there and going like, oh yeah, Rachel, um, yeah, we're going to like go through the office chairs now. Uh, so we're just going to give you a whole assortment of just like hyperventilating because you just don't know what office chair is going to be good for you. And the guy that gives you the options, he's do he doesn't even understand why you're upset. He's like, what, what is up with that? Because he's not actually looking at it in the realm that you're looking at it in, which is like, I have to sit in this chair for maybe potentially eight to 10 hours a day. And if I don't pick out a good chair, I'm going to be uncomfortable for that entire time. And then if I have to bring it back up to Todd, whoever it is, it's going to be really, really uncomfortable to tell him like, hey, listen, you remember that chair that I told you that like I wanted for my op? Yeah, uh, I'm too big. Um, can you like take that back and like get me another one? Now you're being a nuisance to everybody in the office. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's just one thing after another thing. And it's just mild. It's just so many inconveniences instead of just losing weight. And then you'll be good. My office chair for a nonprofit, so money's like the department i also don't like when people just come out of nowhere and go like well, i so well, i work for a non-profit i work for this company i work for this company keep it ambiguous dude don't don't people don't care it's a high dude don't tell people i work that. for money's not you know so strapped that we can't do anything but of course money's a factor and so i feel guilty spending a large amount of money on something as simple as a chair i don't know man sometimes oh because she's gonna have to get a bigger chair oh damn i remember when i worked in certain places dude i, I don't want to seem like i don't want to seem like i'm an asshole here but these particular establishments where i worked where i was maybe a person at the front that was ringing people up dude they didn't give a fuck okay i did um they would literally have people they would have people going and walking out stealing shit dude they would never label things properly and i was sitting there trying to be but i would put in 110 percent everything that i do no matter what i do i'm always going above and beyond right you're paying me for the time you're gonna get the time but sometimes man sometimes people would come up and nothing would be labeled and i gotta go have somebody go back there and they gotta look at the stuff and they gotta tell me the price and then i gotta put the price in and argue with the person whatever the fuck sometimes i just give people stuff for free and sometimes i would do it by accident sometimes you would just ring something up and it wouldn't ring up or sometimes what would really happen is you would have to log in right so like you would have a code or whatever that you would have to put in they would tell you log out in between customers because if somebody robs you they can't get into your register right and so sometimes I forget to log in and the dudes would come up and I would just start scanning, scan, 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 scan. And then to get, like I get to the end of it or I get close to the end of it and I look at my register and bro, I'm not logged in. None of this shit's even been tracked up to this point. I'm not going to go through. I've already bagged 75 items. I'm not going back through and taking the stuff out, you know, rescanning it, putting it back in. This is going to take way even long time. I just log in and scan the last 10 things. And that dude goes, yeah, how much is it? And I go, oh, yeah, uh, this 200 things that you have, uh, 50 bucks, 50 bucks. And they'll go, $50? That's all of this? $50? And I go, yo, watch you close your fucking mouth, bro. Don't be talking... Don't be screaming this shit out, bro. 
don't don't and by the way when i give you this receipt don't return any of this don't do not return any of these items at all and i tell them that and they would take the bag and they would they would be skipping out of the store dude i just gave that dude 200 dollars off i even knew a dude right a dude i knew whose name was adam and everybody used to confuse me with him because he was white and it was like me and this dude were the only white dudes in the entire establishment which is really really crazy that you would think i look like this guy literally people would come up to me like yo adam can you think you can price check this for me and i'd go uh yeah sure bro i just kind of play into it because at that point i guess me and adam were just like simultaneously the same person right but sometimes right this dude adam one time i remember he had come up to my register and he was like bro did you have a black guy that came up to your register today and did he like did he um did he just like walk away and i was like oh yeah i did have a guy that came up he had like a ton of stuff and then i told him the price and he just walked off and he's like oh yeah bro i had that I actually i think he confused you with me and vice versa and he went up to your register because that i was going to give that guy everything for free but he he thought he thought I was you and I guess he just kind of got this way and I just kind of thought like you know we don't look the same you know what I mean? we have two different hairstyles we have two different dress senses this guy doesn't this guy's like an inch two inches shorter than me how does this even happen like how do you confuse both of us but we were white so anyway I don't even know what we're talking about spending but. a large amount of money on something yeah but like the point I'm making is like fuck it they're like dude you're working for the company if they want to give you to if they're just saying like whatever you want and you're gonna just do it bro why the fuck does it matter as yeah. simple as a chair when um you know there are things that that money could more easily go toward yeah dude i i get it like you're it's a non-profit well i don't know what the non-profit is dude but simultaneously dude like fuck it bro this is like i don't know why you got morals when it comes to this shit so i keep asking them what the budget is and they just keep saying like it's okay just get what you need true bro just like if they're giving you that if they're telling you just do whatever the fuck you want, stop trying to appease people. Stop trying to make it seem like you're being a burden, dude. It is what it is. Fuck them. It's all about what they don't say. If they say get whatever you need, I'm running it up. I'm running it up. Dude, what you talking about? Get whatever I want. <laughs> all right. I mean, you said so, right? I mean, <laughs> you said it, not me. Anyway, um, give me the double deluxe backrest. Uh, make that leopard print 100% authentic. I want the, I want the leopard that teddy roosevelt killed back in like 1903 i need that shit bring that over here okay i want adamantium i want adamantium fucking bone structure on the seat okay and make sure whoever delivers it i need that guy to also tell me i'm beautiful because yeah yeah i just need that that's just you know what i'm talking about that's what i need i would be running it up what the fuck are you talk if you if i'm asking you like hey bro like What's the deal? Like, you know, how much we paying for this shit? And you go like, get whatever you want. I'm like, oh, okay. There's no budget. Like, I don't even know these people, bro. What are you, my employer, dude? I don't give a fuck. You know, you know my mom. You know my fucking brother. You know my fucking girlfriend, my wife. I don't give a fuck, bro. I'm not trying to appease you. Who are you? I'm calling out every week. Who the fuck are you? I don't give a fuck. I don't own this establishment anything. Just get what you need. And I'm like... I don't know if you guys understand. You, you got to be running it up crazy if you're talking about some. Uh, hold up, uh, I don't know what I don't know. I don't know if you know what I'm asking for right now, bro. You're telling me to get whatever I want. I don't think you understand how big how big this bill's about to be. Like I'm gonna just let you know right now. This might be three or four times. This this shit got to be crazy if you're hitting these dudes with like a okay, but like that's gonna be crazy, bro. There's no budget. Just get what you need. And I'm like, I don't know if you guys understand that standard size chairs are you know three hundred dollars for a super fancy one um but i'm looking that's actually uh really really cheap three hundred dollars for a fancy chair i was thinking dude dumb herman millers bro which are the best of the best are like fifteen hundred that you know i'm not even joking dude fifteen hundred two thousand dollars for a for a good one bro and that's not even the best one you can probably get like a better one for like three thousand dollars not even joking with you go to offices like bro if i went downtown i remember i worked downtown with this one place I didn't give a fuck about it, bro. It was just one of those places that told people stop fracking. And they thought it was cool because I actually knew what fracking was. It's only because I watch random videos late at night. But they thought I was really interested in this shit, bro. They had so this was a nonprofit as well. This was literally like they would take the money and they would just re-forward it to whatever organization needed it. They had so many Herman Millers, bro. These were like big offices, right? And they had so many chairs all over the place, dude. Giant walnut tables, dude. And I'm just thinking like, dude, you guys are trying to help the environment. These chairs are fucking running up fossil fuels. How many Indian guys died trying to make this chair? You get what I'm talking about? Like, I think that the, the leather, 
the oil from the leather that they use to like wipe it down to increase the you know the the the, the satisfactory the shine on that leather i think that's actually the grease from the italian man's hands not even like actual you know like not even it's just it's just grease but some of these places dude yeah they got like three thousand dollar chairs dude they got like 10 of them 15 of them per office room dude it's crazy um three hundred dollars is light three hundred dollars is this chair was 150 this chair was what that's light you know what i'm talking about the, the, you talking about 300 pounds i'm sorry 300 300 dollars that's light that's real light three hundred dollars for a super fancy one um but i'm looking at a floor a baseline model for 350 because of my weight and the need to have a capacity to hold my weight. Uh, you know, this is like one thing that they always go to is like the fat tax that they have to keep. They have to always make sure that whatever they buy is going to be sustainable for whatever they need it for. So like, for instance, my bed, this bed is like 10 years old, right? This bed is literally like 10 some years old. I never really needed a, a need to, I never had a need to upgrade my bed or whatever because I got bigger or comfort level or whatever the fuck. But if you're a fat person, I've literally seen fat people complain that they broke the, they broke the fucking holder or whatever that shit's called, dude. And I see that a lot. Like I see people going, I broke the frame. I broke the frame. Like uh, the, 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 the thing that holds the bed up. Like I can't, I, I broke three or four of them at this point. And I just think like, dude, you, that's, why the fuck are you dealing with this shit? Like, like you, you got some issues that I feel like normal people, like I would never have to tolerate that issue. And the fact that you, instead of, you broke the first one. And instead of going, I need to lose weight, you bought three more and then broke those ones substantially after that. And instead of thinking like at any point in that time to lose the weight, you just keep buying them. I just don't know what else to say. Then it's your fault. Like you, you put yourself in this bracket. How can I look at what your problems are and think of anything other than what the fuck am I supposed to do? You're over here breaking the frames on the bed and you just keep breaking that shit. And the same thing here. How many chairs in your house? Have you gone through before you realize that you need to get a chair that was like double, triple, quadruple reinforced and, and like it had to be made in like a, a construction facility. You know what I'm saying? Like these giant fucking chairs and not even that. Like think about this too. These people can't even get in and out of the shower accordingly. So they got to find apartments where the door slides so they can't like open so they can't like lift up their leg and get into the, the, the shower tub or whatever, dude. Sometimes the bathrooms like they can't properly wipe themselves. So they're going to need to buy a bidet guaranteed. They're going to need to buy a bidet. You know what I'm talking about? You're going to have to go to the kitchens. The chairs there got to be massive. It's got to be it's like your entire life at this point is being dictated because you are fat when you don't have to be fat is a big difference between like a bigger man, for instance, like a guy that's really, really tall. He can't control that. But for you, dude, you don't have to have all these issues. And the fact that you're hitting your, dude, if I was the employer and that, and, and a woman come up to me talking about, uh, so like, let me know what the budget, I don't want to spend too much on a chair, but, uh, you know, what's the budget on the chair? And you go, listen, just get whatever you need. Listen, like you're a great employee, just, you know, whatever, right? Whatever you want. And the lady goes, yeah, oh, that's fine, but like, listen, um, it's kind of going to be a lot. I'd be like, uh, what do you, uh, what do you, if I told you that is no budget and you still telling me that's going to be a lot, what are you, what are you going to buy exactly? Like, what is that? What do you, why are you even, you know what I'm talking about? That's crazy as fuck to be like, there's no budget. And then you go, but hold up, wait, hold, I think you got to reconsider for a second because it's going to be kind of crazy. I'll be literally starting to sweat, like wiping the sweat from my brow, just like, hold up. How much is she going to be exactly, bro? That's crazy as fuck. Like, what are you going to buy? Like, three or four, five times the, the price of everybody else's chair just for you? So if I'm going to get anything like I prefer a mesh back over a leather back because the office is really warm. And yeah, I you got the automatic heat mode on that, that body. You, you know what I'm talking about? When you're big, when you got that voluptuousness. You got that extra 30% heat at all times. So in summertime, you go, oh man, dude. I knew dudes in the winter time that were sweating, dude. And I'm talking about it was 30 degrees, 20 degrees uh Fahrenheit. And it was they were sweating. And I'm all like, dude, it's fucking cold as shit, bro. And you wearing you wearing shorts. And I'm like, yeah, dog, but you know how it is, man. I'm a big man. I gotta do what I do. I'm gonna go get that chopped cheese right now. And I'm looking like this dude is literally wearing basketball short back basketball shorts. He's got a North Face on, one of the biggest North Faces you've ever seen. And he's wearing Tim's and, and a do-rag. And I'm just looking like, bro, what is your attire, you know? And But you know what's really crazy is people thought he looked good. I didn't think he looked fucking good, dude. I don't know about that shit. It's like, you know, whatever. Back over a leather back because... I prefer, I prefer mesh, too. The office is really warm, 
and I prefer padded arm handles instead of, um, you know, regular plastic ones that feel like they're going to break. Like, you got to be fat as shit, dude. These armrests are also plastic, right? But these things can, you know, I can probably do dips on these. Dude, these are stable. Like, I've had this for a year, and this is stable as fuck. You got to be real big if you're using the armrest to get up, and that shit's going to, you know what I'm talking about? Like, snaps off. You got to be big, dude. I don't, <laughs> problems as a big person right here. I'm looking somewhere between five to seven hundred dollars. Oh, damn. Damn, bro. That's crazy. You're big. If you're over here, if the average price for a chair, let's just say, for instance, in this office, because people are saying like if she's saying three hundred dollars is a lot. Right. I'm thinking that probably the office chairs is running about one fifty to two fifty ish. If she's saying her shit's gonna be around five to seven hundred dollars, dude, she's literally quadrupling the price just for herself, man. Man, dude, and this is one of the problems too. I see a lot with with people that employ fat people, and they go, "It's just not so suitable. It's not sustainable for us to hire you." It may not just be the fact that these people are so big they may not be able to stand up on their feet and walk from one end of the place to the other end of the place, or maybe even like you know, if you're a cashier, you're gonna be standing up for a long period of time. The fact that this woman is taking up quadruple four times as much money as everybody else's chair think about what else this woman's gonna be taking up you know i'm not saying it's look i get it if you're disabled or you have problems and you need this this accountability technique and things like that that's fine obviously but these issues for this woman do not have to exist they can literally just be alleviated with a simple calorie deficit and a little bit of know-how and i'm thinking there has to be a budget you just haven't told me what it is. Bro, if you hit that person with, I'm looking at a $700 chair, that person gonna be like, Ugh, what you just say? So, 700? So almost a stack? You gonna need a stack for the chair? You know, it's a non-profit, right? Like we, we not even making, we're not making any money here, bro. What are you talking about? You all throw this money at your, oh, God damn. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we just have a couple of employees just sitting on the box that kid that your chair came in that's fine they don't have to sit at all matter of fact it's fine dude they'll just stand up just for you so i'm trying to like pep talk myself and be like hey asking for what you need for your safety and your comfort i mean safety work is not greedy it's not wasteful it just depends on what you mean by greedy dude because the downward effect of it might be greedy it might be greedy because think about this. You're eating a ton of food. You're eating three, four, maybe. I don't know how much food she's eating in comparison to other people. It just may be that she's eating high, higher calories. It could be what it is. But guarantee she's paying more money than food. Uh, she's doing that. And as a byproduct of that, everything in her life needs to be accompanied from that particular front. And you know things are going to cost more money because you're a bigger person, right? You need way more stuff to maintain that size. And then because you're going to work and you need to get that extra chair that, you know, whatever kind of chair that this $800, $700 chair, whatever, almost a stack of a chair. You can't tell me that's not greedy, dude. It's all right. Like, I'm not here. Listen, I would be taking advantage of it too, dude. I'll I'll be running that shit up too, bro. Whatever they don't say. I always read between the lines. If you tell me I can get whatever I want, dude, trust on that, dude. I'm going to get cup holders, dude. I'm going to get the heating. I'm going to have a USB port. I'm going to plug my chair into the wall. Fuck, I'm running it up, dude. What you talking about, dude? You just told me I can get whatever I want. I'm getting whatever I want. I have one with, like, toaster strudels on the fucking side, dude. Does it come with a person? Can I have a guy that just, like, comes with it that, that I can just rent? Like, what do you, you know what I'm talking about? Like, what do, what do I get with that shit? But you can't tell me, like, you're literally doing this shit because you have to. For me, I would just be doing it because fuck it. But, yeah, bro, of course, it's just a little bit of greed. Any of that? But this is really nerve-wracking, and... Because you know it's something wrong with it. Like, this... She's saying the quiet part out loud, dude. She's literally saying, like, I know I shouldn't feel bad about it because this is what I need, and this is how I should operate in life. Like, I need this. And then she goes, but I'm just feeling still kind of bad about it. Yeah, because you know it's not a good thing. You know that this is literally the quiet... Your, 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 your mentality, deep down, you know this is not good. You know this is a problem. And it is a problem. But go ahead, go off queen, slay queen edges. I'm scared to send the order form to my boss because first of all- I don't think most of the time, like a lot of those people, the higher ups, I don't think they even look at the bill. Am I wrong? It's not like this guy's gonna be looking through the bill like, damn, Cheryl ordered a 150. Yeah, Margaret ordered that 200. James, oh, James got that new one. Yeah, James got that, the one with the, the seat. It was, yeah, that's pretty. Uh, Cheryl got the 700 thing. James got the, oh, Cheryl got the $700 one. Did, 
What the fuck? What? I didn't even know that was on the list. Seven hundred dollars. What she even get with that? Hold up. Oh, damn. De damn, adamantium, fucking oru, whatever that shit, the metal that they made Thor's hammer out of. God damn, that shit's big as fuck. Uh, three, four times the price of everybody else. Like, nobody's looking through that shit. M most people are just kind of like, they, the order goes through, they send the form through, nobody gives a fuck. So, I mean, I get what she's saying. She's feeling insecure, don't know what for. She's turning heads when she walks to the door. Or, but, dude, it is what it is. I mean, you're fat. You know it's going to be an issue for you. It's just really interesting that you're bringing it up as an issue, though. Usually, these people are like, fat and proud. I'm beautiful. I know what I can do with my life. But, dude, you're, you know, you have to accept to a certain degree. You're going to have to deal with problems like this. Like, that is kind of revealing my weight. Like, it has uh, to be you, this one. Because... What you mean is revealing your weight. I have eyes. What are you working in a facility of blind people? People have noses, too, right? They can smell. So, like, dude, it's not like, what you're saying right now is that it's revealing your weight, but we can already see that. We know you're big. We know we know you're big. It's not. It, it it's not a surprise. The chair ain't going really. It's not. Everybody already knows. Because otherwise, it won't hold me. Crazy as fuck. <laughs> and also, like, <laughs> that's a lot of money. And everybody else in the office seems to be. You know, most of them are fairly smaller sized, and so they probably didn't have to spend that much money on their office chairs, and I'm just like, I don't wanna do this. So, words of encouragement to myself today, asking for what you need is not greedy. And but you don't need this if, I mean, it's what you need right now. I'm not here to say, listen, you know I'll be running it up, but still, you didn't need this shit. You could have lost weight at any point in your life. You could still lose weight, but I guess, I mean, what are they going to say, right? I mean, I'm looking at it from her perspective, right? If you over here and they tell you order whatever you want and you go, oh, whatever, $700, and dollars for a chair, what are they going to do? Like, what do you think is going to happen? You get the chair, HR comes in and goes, listen, um, we're going to need to have a talk. Like, what, they're not going to do that shit. Just claim that you're black. Tell them that you're being discriminated against. Suit them. Like, what are you? They're not going to do that shit. They're not going to come in and say, you're too big. We can't get the chair. That's not what's going to happen, okay? They literally cannot do that. We have laws in place directly for that. Give or take whatever the fuck you want to say. I don't care. Like, you can say it's good, it's bad. It's what's in place. Take whatever crutch you fucking need, right? I was firmly against affirmative action. But I don't, I think every black dude, every woman of color, whatever, bro, I think you should have went there and I think you should have got that crutch because fuck it, it's free money, right, dude? I'm against it. I don't think people should be getting, uh, I don't think people should be getting unfairly treated based off things that they can't control, but it's there. Take that shit. I don't give a fuck, right? Don't feel like you're, look, you're literally going to not take something because your, your morals are in play. Fuck that shit, dude. I'm taking that shit. If I was a black guy and I had a lot of melanin capacity, dude, I'm thinking about it like this. I pay $40 a month on lotion. I deserve to get that affirmative action. You know what I'm saying? I'm just fucking with you. It's all a joke. I know there's some people that are going to think I'm a, a racist for saying this, but no, I'm not a racist, okay? I have like 15 black guy friends, and two of them are also Mexican guys too. But whatever, dude. Um, I'd be running it up, dude. I mean, it's a, it sucks that you have put yourself in a position where you're even – like this is, a t this is a tough deal for you where you're literally looking at yourself as like, I can't believe I have to do this type thing. But you knew you were fat. You knew this is going to be an issue for the rest of your life. I don't know what to say. Like it's literally listed on the build you picked out. You know what I'm talking about? The durability also comes with a cost, the stamina. Today, asking for what you need is not greedy and um your body does not have to accommodate a chair a chair needs to accommodate your body true and chairs are made for people people are not made for chairs that's a factual statement but like your body was not made to be this size you know like i want that to sink in as well that's not like it's true that chairs are made for people dude it's not you're not supposed to be i don't know how much this woman weighs i don't but if you're like five foot three or five foot four, which is the average size for a woman, you're not supposed to be 210. You're not supposed to be 230. You're not supposed to be 300, 400, 500 pounds. This goes for almost anybody. There are very few times where men are even supposed to go over 200 pounds. And those are anomalies, okay? So when I see people that go, oh yeah, but like the world is made for us to a certain degree. We make things to suit us. The world isn't made for us. 
in the sense of like we are made for the world there's you know what i'm talking about we adapted to the world and shit and we just make things to accompany us but you're not supposed to be that size so like i get what you're saying but simultaneously you don't you don't even follow that same logic stream like you yourself are outside the normative value when it comes to how the body is supposed to be shaped but it's up to you bro like i said i'd be running it up they wouldn't tell you they're like hyperventilating over this shit dude a chair needs to accommodate your body whatever you need to say sometimes like what people i know i keep interrupting there are some people that need to say things to themselves like reaffirm themselves consistently in order to con to, to 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 get through the day um and that might be okay depending on what it is but some people say bullshit just to convince themselves that they're okay you know what i'm talking about it's like a guy that has a fucking giant bulge on his neck and it's obviously not good but he looks in the mirror and he's like this isn't a fucking bulge bro i'm just pregnant or like this is just a normal thing that guys have to deal with this is my second Adam, adam's apple it just means that i'm more manly you know what i'm talking about like some people just convince themselves of bullshit even though they know it's not like good they'll still do it like they'll still tell themselves it's okay when in reality it's not okay get that shit checked out you know, if you're telling yourself that you're beautiful, you're perfect, and there's nothing wrong with having this extra chair or whatever the fuck, that's fine. You could tell yourself that shit, but it's the equivalent of literally being in a house that's on fire and just sitting there in the middle of the table, sipping your coffee and going, this is okay. This is fine. That's fine. If you want to do that shit, that's only going to last for so long. Eventually, that's just going to catch up to you. And they wouldn't tell you there's no budget if there was a budget if they if they say there's no budget run that shit up i don't care who you are don't feel like you're listen if, unless you own the company or something like that dude and you want to take like you, you don't want to like you know what i'm saying if you're working for a company corporation or whatever and they say there's no budget on a chair or whatever bruh what are you doing like you're not taking that you're not running it up you're not getting the armrest you're not getting the cup holder you're not plugging your seat in you're not getting the heated pads what you doing what you i pfft. Bro, I want I want a, a a chair that has one of those uh those those water holders behind it and I can just take a straw and just suck it up on the when I'm when I'm working, bro. What are you talking about, bro? I'm running it up. They wouldn't tell you there's no budget if there's a budget. What are you doing right now? There was a budget. They tell you the budget. What are you doing right now? What are you doing, man? What are we doing right now? Huh? Why are you acting like this? Why are you like she really going through it? Get the chair you need. True. Then privilege check. True. Have you ever been to a restaurant, theater, or flown on a plane where the seating was designed too small for your body? No. Have you ever walked into a clothing store and worried that they would not have your size? Yes. Have you ever received weight loss advice unsolicited from a friend, family member, or even a stranger? Yes. Have you ever been to the doctor for a health issue and been prescribed weight loss as a treatment? No. Have you ever had a misdiagnosis? This gotta be... Hold up. Before we watch any further, can somebody let me know, right, in the comments? I'm actually very interested in this. Is this not uncomfortable right here? This, this like um this I, i'm guessing this is some kind of like sweatshirt or something like that is that not uncomfortable do you remember that episode of spongebob where spongebob made squidward the 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 sweater from his eyebrows and he put it on he was like itching you know what i'm talking about it's really itchy i couldn't imagine this not being itchy i couldn't imagine wearing this and putting it on and not throughout the day having to like you know move it around and stuff like that because it's just it looks uncomfortable am i wrong in saying that can somebody let me know like I, this, this, this looks very, very hairy, and I don't like that. I don't like having to keep moving stuff around. The doctor for a health issue and been prescribed weight loss as a treatment. Have you ever had a misdiagnosis because of your size? Oh, what is it? What is the purpose of this video, though? Are you like trying to show people how great you are? Like that's all I ever see when I see these people. Like just humble bragging, you know? Just like, oh, I've never had to deal with any of these problems anyway. I'm really pretty, right, guys? Right? All right. I'm so hot. I'm so great. Like, or it's just to make people feel bad while feeling good about like you're acknowledging your privilege then because you're acknowledging your privilege somehow that makes you like higher than everybody else because you're acknowledging it and i don't understand like is this just like a way for people to like think you're cool how does this work exactly bro i couldn't imagine i couldn't imagine making a video and trying to make it like oh people feel bad for me while feeling good about you know my stuff so like i get solicit sympathy points like what are you doing why are you doing this? So weird. Two and been prescribed weight loss as a treatment. Have you some of these things are so incredibly niche though, like that are never going to apply to thin people. Like going to the doctor and being prescribed weight loss when, when you're like 130. Yeah, this is never going to, can we have like more generic fucking things that are going to apply to everybody? This doesn't even make any sense. That's like somebody going like, oh, um, privilege check. Like, oh, have you ever walked, have you ever like been into a CVS and like had to buy lotion because you because you're ashy and you're black no 
oh, okay, then you're not black. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, why are we doing it? It's just so, it's so niche. Like, if, 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 if there are problems specifically designed for black dudes, you know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, uh, privilege check, have you ever combed your hair and your the brush broke in your hair because you have such, you know, you have type 4C hair or whatever the fuck they call that shit? No? Well, yeah, you have you have privilege. You know what I'm talking about? It's just like, why are we going that far? It's so niche. These these things are so incredibly niche, bro. Have you ever been to the doctor? Like having never never fit in a fucking chair? How many thin people are even gonna have a problem with that? That's just like, what are you, like four thin guys in the entire world? You get what I'm saying? Like, why are we even? Here for a health issue and been prescribed weight loss as a treatment? Have you ever had a misdiagnosis because of your size? Have you ever been turned away from IVF, adoption, or a kidney transplant because of your size? Damn, that's really all over the place, bro. Adoption? Like you're what, adopting like a child? Wait, so like if you were obese, I don't know anything about this. So like if you were obese, I can understand the kidney transplant because it's like maybe you're just big as fuck and they can't get in there, right? But adoption, man, that's crazy. Is it because you're so fat that it's like, oh man, you're not going to be able to take care of this kid. You're going to like not live past 15 like 15 more years like this kid is like fucking one or something like that like you're gonna need you for the whole life like you got like type 10 diabetes or some shit like is that was that what it is have you ever been told that you are so brave for wearing a swimsuit have you ever watched <laughs> so dis man that's disrespectful if anybody says you're brave for wearing that i remember i was around a f whole bunch of uh black girls right and I remember this one girl I had known and she wore her bonnet because she wanted to make sure that her hair was protected and she had a like protective style or whatever. So she wanted to make her make sure her hair was really, really moisturized. And these other black girls, because she would go around wearing the bonnet like out in public and stuff. And these other black girls would go, oh, my God, you're so brave for wearing your bonnet out in public. And she would go, oh, yeah, thanks. And then I would just like I remember like her saying that, I was like, bro, isn't that kind of like disrespectful? Like, what are they trying to say right now? Are they trying to say you don't look good because you're wearing the bonnet? Are they trying to say, like, like, aren't you doing the right thing? Like, these women don't even sleep with bonnets. Like, these women are literally dry-headed sleeping on the pillow. And you're wearing, you know what I'm talking Like, I was literally like, bro, how do you not find offense to that? That's like, that's really disrespectful. Like, is that not disrespectful? That's such a most, that's one of the most backhanded compliments I've ever heard in my life. You, like, I almost couldn't believe that shit. And uh, she was like, oh, you know, it's okay, or whatever. I was like, I don't know about that. You want me to say something? Like, that's crazy. Uh -oh. your size have you ever been told that you are so brave for wearing a swimsuit have you ever watched a movie slash show where the only characters that looked like you were written as lazy slash stupid slash obsessed with food I, I just like it's so weird because it's like so many of these are so niche like the characters that look like me in what way like white dudes that have mustaches i don't think so i don't know maybe i like what are we doing I, like why are these so niche bro and it's like we watch this and we go oh my god these people have to go through so much dude what what, what even is that scenario like watched a movie that a character was like lazy or whatever the fuck like i get it maybe fat people have to deal with that shit but that's not going to apply to like 99 percent of the entire population this is so like most people are going to be on the no most people and it's like 99 percent of the okay whatever bro you are not body positive unless you're committed to changing these systems of fat phobia. You're dumb. Like, what are you doing right now, bro? You, this video was irrelevant. You're irrelevant. Period. Tri period. Lost true. I've 100 pounds at least twice in my life and over 50 pounds more times than I count in my life. Okay. Obviously, I've gained it back. My highest weight to my lowest weight, the way people treated me was significantly different. I've always said this. Like, these people have lost some of the most... Like Amber Lynn, for instance, has has probably lost like thousands of pounds in her life, given like she she goes on these like weight loss journeys where she loses 50, maybe even 100 pounds and then gains it all back and then does that like 9, 10, 20 times in her life. Right. Dude, that woman's got to have lost like a thousand plus pounds at that point. So many fat people have lost so much weight, but it almost doesn't mean anything because they keep regaining it. And so much so that it almost affects my mental health now. Because I'm not talking about just like the male gaze, just more men are more interested in you, which is true. But I'm talking about the way your family and friends treat you, the way your coworkers, the way your employers, the way strangers treat you. It's all different. And I don't even know if most of them are aware of it. Some of them are aware of it. But I think for the most part, it's an unconscious bias, preferring smaller bodies to bigger bodies. Yeah, most people prefer smaller bodies to thinner bodies in general, just in general, societally speaking. And probably I think there's something built into human beings that don't, they don't really like looking at people suffering. And when you're obese, you are suffering. So that probably has to do because with it too. it's just the little things in the way they treat you. It's that you're invited to more meetings. You're introduced to more people at work. People want to be around other people that are 
like there's certain energies that people push out right so like if you're more extroverted you notice like if you're extroverted compared to somebody that's inverted then you're going to see that those people are usually the people that are going to get more attention, the people that are going to have a little bit more people around them, want to be around them, things such and so forth. It's so like when you're fat, people just don't like – when you're fat, dude, to a certain degree, to a certain degree, and this maybe applies a little bit differently depending on your gender, but uh. when you're bigger, a lot of people – they just don't have that same type of like energy around you because that person is fundamentally suffering. That person is going through a lot of problems, traumas and things such and so forth. A lot of people just don't want to be around somebody that's suffering. And I get it. I'm not here to deny your humanity. Like you're a human being just like us. But you can't expect other people to want to be around you just because you are like bigger or you're not bigger. Like it's just not like that. Like there is built in things like the way you grew up, the it's fundamentally built into your frame or whatever, dude. Like your brain. A lot of this stuff is predetermined. You were included in more text chains. You were included in more photos. You were included in more social outings. Your accomplishments are celebrated more. Okay, it's like the social outings is kind of crazy though. Like what do you, what, what, what kind of social outing? Like taking a walk somewhere, dude? Yeah, if you're bigger, you're not going to be able to do that. So they're probably not going to so include you. It's like because you've accomplished this big goal that they think that you are someone worthy. That because you were able to go from a bigger body to a smaller body, that somehow you were better than if you couldn't do that. Because they're... When somebody loses a lot of weight and you see that from the before and after, yeah, people look at that and they go, wow, like you did a amazing service to yourself. Like a lot of people during COVID gained a lot of weight. And then when it was over, a lot of people chose to lose that weight. Like it's okay that you gained weight. Like people gain weight over their lives, right? And when you lose that weight, it's such an accomplishment because it shows that you have the ability and the responsibility to look at yourself in a critical way and do something about it as opposed to just accepting that you're fat, right? And it takes a lot of work to even acknowledge it. Just to, just to acknowledge that you gained weight. Just to acknowledge that this might be a problem it takes a lot of effort. So it, acknowledging it and then doing something about it is massive, no pun intended, is massive. So a lot of people look at that and go, this person is reliable, this person is responsible, this person is accountable, this person can be trusted because of these things. Yes, 100%, that is true. Whereas opposed to you just being fat and accepting you're fat, yeah, I mean, 100%. Like, you, do, you don't portray any of that stuff. A lot of people look at that as laziness. And for all my family and friends out there who might be watching this, I am not trying to call you out. I am not trying to say this is anything that is consciously being done. I have great family. I have great friends. I have great employers. I've had great coworkers. But the facts are the facts. So when we inevitably gain the way back, as most of us will, since 99% of us will fail on this weight loss journey. Really, really depressing, dude. Really, really press depressing statistic, dude. Just throwing people down that well of disdain and depression. Because obesity is a disease and it is actively fighting against you when you are losing the weight. And even more so It is. It is actively fighting against you, but in... It's like, yes, it's true, like, people are, but it, it, it simultaneously, dude... Everything's gonna be difficult. If it was if it was easy, every, nobody would be fat. Nobody would be fat, dude. So obviously it's gonna be difficult. So in order to maintain the weight loss, it definitely affects your mental health because you are suddenly aware that even though you thought you were being treated just the same as you would no matter what you look like, you definitely aren't. Anybody that believes that you're gonna be treated exactly as everybody else is living in a fairy tale land, dude. It, you know, we try to we try to ensure that everybody is treated equally across like all spectrums of society and things like that at least here in the west in certain other places maybe not so much but i always talk about things like this i always do this when i'm talking about like america or even the western developed countries more specifically america most people will treat you at a baseline but usually depending on the person they're going to treat you better or worse because maybe people have prior experiences people you know everybody has like their own way of thinking about stuff like that you're not entitled to be treated equally based off individuality like that's never gonna work i you know i i, I don't I, I i fundamentally disagree with that usually women are treated better in certain circumstances certain circumstances and usually men are treated better in certain circumstances it's not something to get upset about i'll give you a good example like women sometimes will have doors held open for them they'll be able to cut in line they'll be able to get things for free whereas for men in those same scenarios probably will not but if you're a dude most of the time, dude, dudes have a higher likelihood of respecting you compared to uh, harassing women, for instance. Or um, maybe people think that you have more validity to talk about something because you're a man. I see that all the time where women seed over. They'll go, 
I don't want to talk to this guy about that. Can you do this? Because I think he'll listen to you more, which is true. A lot of guys respect other guys' opinion compared to women. A lot of guys just look at women's opinions as like, oh, she's just a woman talking. You know what I'm saying? So like, look at it like that. It's not so much that you're owed something. It's more so like just acknowledge that there are going to be inequalities, but people try their hardest to be equal. Things I wish y'all would have told me about going from a size 22 to a size 6. I had a built-in heating pad. Who knew that all this flesh was nature's body warmer? All this flesh was keeping me keeping me warm. Now I'd be cold. Yeah, but it's also taking up way more energy, right? Like it's 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 definitely making you warmer, which is a benefit because like if you're up in like the snowy mountains or whatever, then it's probably really, really good to have a few extra pounds. And I would never have a problem with somebody being 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds over. Like that's fine. Like there are some guys, there's some people out there that want to be a little bit thicker. That's okay. Uh, but when you're like getting into like the hundreds, 200s, 30 pounds of weight, yeah, it's like really detrimental. And I don't care like if it is just being warm, but she's, she's right. Just, oh my God, I'd be cold for no reason. I sit down in a chair. I didn't know all this cushion was my body's protection. People standing close to me with less of me taking up space. Now people think that they can stand right next to me. See, I took up a lot of space, so I didn't have to worry about people standing next to me. I don't know if I just noticed that, but listen, y'all should have told me. The you look different detectives, the people that are squinting their eyes. Girl, you look different. What looks different? Now you know. Now you know I am. It's, it's, it's a benefit though, right? Because like, if you've been fat for your whole life and then you lose weight, a lot of times people don't even realize what they look like for a large portion of their life because they never actually know what they look like. They've just been fat. They have fat on their face. They have fat on their body. They don't know what their body structure looks like. They have no idea what their bone structure looks like, where their face starts and stops, where their forehead is, where their jaw structure is, where their cheekbones are, where their nose structure is because you've been fat for so long and sometimes people have been fat since literally being a children. So you have these issues of just never knowing and just identifying as a fat person but when you lose weight people look at these things and go oh my god wow you actually really look good and it's so much better to unleash the inner beauty that you actually have as opposed to just the default build that you had which was just being fat which is not good by the way i am 125 pounds good job lighter. you know i look different good job 125 pounds clap good job good job good job what did you do what uh, hmm I didn't realize you was that big. Breezy does it. Listen, let me tell you, getting a breeze or a chill in places in your body, on your body that you didn't know existed. Listen, there's this little part like at the top of your butt crack. Listen, I'm just telling you, I'm getting cold in places I didn't get cold. It's some of the best things. Like sometimes what I'll do in the in the middle of summer is I will purposefully not like dry off certain por portions of my body so that way I can stand in front of the air conditioner and just air dry certain things. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not going to specify what areas of my body that I don't dry. Penis. To, to, to ensure that I get that cold breeze. It just feels – if it's like 85 degrees or 90 degrees outside and you get that cold air, dude, oh, Man, there's just very few things in the world that feel better than that. How about those people who haven't seen you before your weight loss? And so when you when they're right in front of you, they start walking around looking like, where's the rest of you? True. Just making it just all awkward. Like, oh my God, you've disappeared. I feel like that's an okay thing though. People treat you different. They do. People get away from the treat light. Treat you different. I'm noticing that. And what's crazy is I've been smaller before. Um, and I didn't notice it, so I gained like 125 pounds. And now that I've lost 125 pounds, I don't know the societal standards that are just going on in the world about I have to treat you better because you're smaller. It makes no sense to me because it's just a passive. It's like passively treating you better. You know, most people don't acknowledge that they're treating you better, but they're passively treating you better because you're treating yourself better. If that makes any sense. Like if somebody's acknowledging that you're treating yourself really, really terribly, then they're more likely going to treat you terribly because they just kind of like think like they're just basically projecting it. If that makes any sense. So as a byproduct of losing weight, you do get people that treat you better passively most of the time. Like it's very, very few times people are actually looking at what they do and they go, I'm going to treat this person better because they're thinner. Most of the time, it's literally just like 
they're not thinking about it. They're just doing it, if that makes any sense. Because ultimately, I am the same individual, same personality. It's kind of weird. Yeah, but you yourself are different in the format of which your body is shaped, right? And a lot of somebody's, a lot of somebody's health is determined based off body size. So, yeah, you're treating yourself way better and as a byproduct of that. People are going to treat in you better. House one day and my dog tried to attack me because he what? didn't recognize. No. He didn't recognize me. I thought the dog, I thought it was going to be like something racist, like, oh, because I'm black or something. I don't he know. Didn't, he didn't, he didn't recognize me. It was so much easier for me to find clothes in size 22, size 18, size 16 than it is a six and an eight. Oh, let's be saying right there. Yeah. Oh, man. That's actually a really good point, dude. I don't know what the size six is eight, six or eight is. I, I don't understand women's sizes, but I say this a lot, dude. Being a small, like here in where I live, uh, no, you almost never can find clothes. Like this, this was at the very bottom of the fucking rack, okay? Um, and there's never any clothes options in terms of colors and other things like that. It's it, when you're a thinner person or a smaller person, it's very difficult. Also, I'm not gonna say it's as difficult as it would have been to find clothes at a size 22, size 30, or whatever the fuck, but it is difficult. So hard. It was really only one shoe brand that I could wear, and that was Jessica Simpson because she caters to large feet and wide feet. But for some reason now. I'm able to get into any 11. Damn. So I guess my feet were fat too. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. Listen, my my shoe grew two shoe sizes when I was pregnant with my daughter. When you gain weight, you don't just gain weight in your gut, your thighs, your butt. You gain weight everywhere. Like literally everywhere. That's why when you lose weight, there are some people out there that will try to convince you that there's such thing as like targeted weight loss where they go like check out my fitness program and make sure you hit the subscribe button and when you type in my coupon code make sure you type in weight loss into the into the coupon code and you can get 25% off and my fitness program will ensure you'll get abs in two weeks because it comes with a special serum and you're gonna take that once a day right it's like there's no way to do that okay there's like I don't care how many crunches you do I don't care how many curls you do like no there's the you might gain more muscle and it may look like you're targeting weight loss you're not all you're doing is just growing the muscle so if you want to actually get abs if you want to actually build the frame you're going to also have to like lose weight in in, in a very unspecific way you're just going to have to start calorie deficiting and focusing on weight loss as much as you can because if you want abs if you want these big bustling muscles it really just does come down to just taking care of yourself. There's no way you can target weight loss. No way. Your body's going to lose weight regardless. And the same thing for gaining weight. If you eat a lot of food and you think you're just gaining weight in your thighs, you're not. You're gaining weight all over the place. It may be favorable. You might have the, a good distribution of weight in the areas that you want to, right? Maybe boobs, butt, and thighs or other places. But for the most part, no. Nah, you're probably going to gain weight in the areas that you don't want to gain weight in. And that sucks, but it's it works in both ways. So, um, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the shoes. I'm excited that I'm able to wear a small and comfortable shoe. Great. I mean, why are people so comfortable telling you not to lose any more weight, but they were not comfortable telling you not to gain any more weight because I was in a health crisis. True. Listen, I was beautiful both sizes. I was just in a health crisis that required me to lose the weight. Otherwise, I was pretty content the way I was. A lot of people don't want to start fires. A lot of people just want to, a lot of people don't want to start conflict. And that's really, really sad. And it's more acceptable to tell somebody you look good at 400 pounds than it is to tell somebody you look good at, I don't know, 130 or something like that. Like a lot of people are just okay with telling you bullshit because they know that if they do, it will be exactly what you want to hear as opposed to what you need to hear. And that really, really sucks because depending on the person that you're with, that should be the people that tell you the most things. Like if it's your husband, wife, uncle, father, mother, these people should be the ones that tell you the most. But a lot of times they don't because they think that it's going to hurt you or it's going to hurt your feelings or whatever the fuck. So it's really, really terrible and it's disgusting, but it is the truth nonetheless. It's really, really good to sometimes read between the lines and see what people are not saying because that is usually where the truth lies, if that makes any sense. But anyway doesn't matter. You're a beautiful person. That's in the video today, guys. I hope that everybody enjoyed today's video. Um, if you did, I'd appreciate if everybody leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. I have membership, so if you want to do that, you can. If you don't want to, that's fine too. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in bottle cap.
I have so many of them here because I drink so much water and they just accumulate. And sometimes what I'll do is I like put the water bottles on my fingers because I have so many of them, right? And I, I clean them up like once a day. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just leave them there. But I like to put them on my fingers. I just like, <laughs> I keep them on my fingers because it, it kind of looks cool. I'm like Edward Scissorhands, except Edward Bottled Hands, right? Look at that. Look at that, dude. Woo! Right? Isn't that cool? All on my fingers, dude. Look at that. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. But anyway, guys. Um, that's the end of the video today. Um, thank you for being so incredibly lubricated. I'm going to clean those up. I promise. Uh, <laughs> thank you for being so incredibly lubricated and enjoying your water sensation in your mouth. Lubricating and properly diagnosing your issues that water consumption should be the number one thing that you focus on or at least like one of the top things you focus on really lubricating the inner cords of your mouth ensuring that when you vocalize yourself it's lubricated it's moist it's wet it feels good when you talk it feels good when you walk it feels good when you do anything so thank you for taking care of yourself properly you're an amazing person you smell really good today i like your odor even if you're not wearing deodorant it smells it still smells really good enjoy the rest of your day guys make sure you check out my Instagram, Twitter, Discord. It's going to be all listed in the description of this video and the description of this channel. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.